Hello, and welcome to my very last video of the year in which I try my best to imitate Eric for President. No, not really. But I do want to get stuff said. As you probably saw from the title, I'm going to run through my top VR titles for the year. Because the quest came out in the middle of the year, I'm including Gear VR slash Go titles as well. Bear in mind these are not in any particular order. Number 20 is just as good, in my opinion, as number 11. I did, however, separate Gear slash Go titles in the first 10 and Quest in the second 10. <clears throat> if you like this format compared to my normal style, let me know by liking and commenting. And please consider subscribing. And before we get started on the list, I want to mention this is my second time recording this. Um, because um, OBS decided not to record the first time. So I went through the whole list and got to the end and it didn't record. So I'm doing this again, but I already closed all the store pages for the apps and I've only got one hour until midnight. I'm not pulling that all back up again. I'm, I'm just going to run through, race, uh, race through. And if I have the time, I will add links to the Oculus store pages in the description. So, sorry, it's just going to be my mug for the whole video. So, now let us go. Number 20, Dead Secret Circle. Um, I had this on our I played the original Dead Secret ages ago on the GVR and it was one of the really early titles and it was groundbreaking at the time and it was incredibly immersive and really made you feel a sense of presence of being there and being your character. So I was really pumped when I heard about Dead Secret Circle and I went ahead and I got it. And it did not disappoint. Very well done. Just as immersive, just as presence making it has the original, just as creepy. Highly recommend it. Um, if you still have a Gear VR or a Go, go out and grab the title. Number 19, Dead Body Falls. This is made by the makers of Ongus. Another excellent t t t t title that should probably be on this list, but I had to pick and choose and be ruthless in my cutting. So, it's, so Dead Body Falls is a surreal creepy up to your interpretation game. Uh, you are entering a hotel and there is a story going on of is it a murder? Is it not a murder? Uh, something stolen? Not stolen? What exactly happened? You have to interpret that yourself. It is left for interpretation but weird things do happen like walking through a corridor and then the next time you walk through it it's full of giant birch trees i recommend it if i remember right it was free number 18 is anne frank house vr this is on the quest as well um i'm including it here because this is where i first experienced it and i believe on the quest the only thing it really adds is um, the room scale moving around. Everything else is pretty much the same. So I'll talk about it here. There's been room for another one in the quest section. Uh, this is allowing you to experience being in the safe house that Anne Frank The diary of a young girl was in for two plus years while hiding from the Nazis. 
there is a kind of story tour mode you, you can go through that that takes you through all the rooms and just uh, tells the story. And there's a free explore mode. And there's kind of an epilogue where it shows you or, or tells you what happened to them afterward. I highly recommend it. It's an incredibly significant piece of, of history and this can give you a new perspective on it. Number 17, Eclipse, Edge of Light. This is a game that was originally on Daydream only and then moved to the Gear VR and the Go. Um, and I forget if it came to Quest as a Quest title or, or, or just the, uh, the Oculus Go compatibility titles, I forget which, but it's available on the Quest in one form or another as well. It's, an, it's a very good game. Um, it's a, a puzzle game. You uh, crash land on a planet and you have to solve puzzles to try and rescue the sentient planet from an evil and stop the evil from destroying the planet. So, uh, you run across evidence that you have been, uh, gone down that, that path before. Um, so there's a little bit of time travel, timey wiminess going on there. Number 16, Beatron 2000. This was, um... In my opinion, a very innovative game for the Oculus Go. Um, it's a rhythm game. But instead of having a lightsaber, you have basically um, a Xena Warrior Princess style disc that you smash notes with. And even though you are limited to it just being the the Gear controller, which is, or Oculus Go controller, which is three de uh, three degrees of freedom only. Joe Strout, the developer, made awesome use of that to kind of create the feeling that you were actually in a thick stuff game. Uh, to an extent, you th there are no obstacles where you have to dodge or or duck under, but there are things where instead of smashing the, the notes on the right angle and the right uh, and the right timing, you have to shoot them by throwing the disc out and and hitting them. So a very well done game. I kind of wish that it would come to the quest. Joe, if you are listening, I would, I would, I would play this on the quest too. Number 15, Blaze Rush. Uh, this is kind of um, a third person, uh, top down, although not a, a directly top down, but you know, that is a kind of orthogramic, uh, orthographic, view um and is a racing game that's kind of like death lap you know, um various various obstacles you've got weapons various courses that you can go through some of the, of the game modes you've got a big giant like combine coming after you and if you're not in the lead, you get you, you get eaten up by it. So, um, and there's um, even kind of a rocket league uh, kind of game mode as well, where you are playing football with your cars. So, <laughs> a very fun game. I had lots of fun playing it with the MVR Discord folks. Um, I can try to drop a link for the Discord um, in the description. And number 14 is Suro, Game of the Path. 
This is a physical board game that also has an, an iOS version and the developer was working on making a VR version and came out with it for the Go and the Gear VR. Uh, I and several others in the MVR Discord were part of the beta that uh, helped it become the, the final version. It's a incredibly fun game. It's a um, uh, beautiful environment, beautiful music. Uh, you, you can teleport down on to the game board, so you can see from a different perspective. He has various um, Easter eggs and interactive things um, hidden on, in the map in the lobby area. So um, it, I highly recommend that if you have a Gear VR or a Go still, do go and check it out. Very well done. Number 13, Break a Leg. This is a demo. Well, so the demo version of it, um, I tried ages ago and I was very impressed by how they used the, the, the Gear VR controller to kind of emulate a, a, an Oculus Touch controller. It, it, it has a drawing shapes in the air with your controller. Picking something up with it, bringing it to your mouth to eat it, bringing it to your ear to put it on your ear, bringing it to your head, uh, holding it up to your mouth to blow. All sorts of immersive actions that a lot of other developers at the time were not even thinking of doing with the VR controller. So when it became available on a sale for the full version, I snatched it up and I bought it and I was able to complete the game. It's a, it's a fairly well written story. It's the puzzles in it and let's face it, they are puzzles basically. Uh, were not too terribly hard, but they weren't too super easy either. And the ending was a little predictable, but Back in my high school days, I used to read 20 books a week outside of my required reading. So, um, I blame that on, uh, on me being a little bit jaded about prop, uh, pr plot development and, um, having too much of that stuff in my head. So, um, other people may not be quite as predictable an ending. Either way, it was very well done, and I did not mind that I, I saw the ending coming. Number 12, Virtual Virtual Reality. <clears throat> yes, this is on the Quest as well. I played it first here on the Gear VR, and the Quest version is mostly the same, except you have two controllers. And there's a couple of different uh, uh, AI characters that you interact with, and there's a different or an additional area in your home area in the game. So this is a game where you are in a future where Activitude hires humans to go into VR to uh, do odd jobs, and I do mean odd jobs for their AI clients. But along the way, you start getting the feeling that there is something maybe a little bit more nefarious going on. And soon it becomes a fight for your own survival, as it were. So, um, very well done. It's very innovative, very surreal, and I like surreal, a lot of humor. And overall, a very fun game, and I highly recommend it, no matter which platform you are getting it on. Um, it's on the Go, it's on Gear VR, it's on Rift, Steam VR, I believe, it's on Quest. So, go and get it, it's well worth it. The number 11, 
Tokyo Chronos demo. Uh, yes, I only played the, the, the demo, and I only played about half of the demo on the Gear VR because they pulled it from the store due to some some bugs that I never quite find out w w what it was. But I went in, I downloaded it on the go, and uh, I completed this uh, demo on my wife's go. So, um, so, so why am I including that when I just mentioned that it has a big bug? Well, it was the first VR app on Secure VR or the go that was a $40 app. So to my knowledge, it was the very first one. That was so far above the price of any other game that I saw it as signaling that things were starting to change in the market and um, VR was maturing. So f for that reason alone, it deserves to be on, on my list. It also deserves to be on my list because it was very well done. Uh, what I played in the demo was Really well done. Um, it, like being in a manga that is a little bit like an anime, but not not entirely because it's still mostly still people, it's the dialogues read aloud, etc. Occasional motion, but it was still immersive, and it was an interesting story, and it um, it kind of hold you in. And from my understanding, later on, there are interactive elements as well. So I am so keeping an eye on it. If it ever drops a little bit in in price, because there are only uh, uh, so many games that are above $20 that I can afford to, to get. So I always hold off on those and, until that becomes a necessity, as it were. So I'm keeping an eye on that if it becomes available at a lower price or if I d decide to splurge, I'm going to get it. I'm going to finish it. So number 10, Racket Fury Table Tennis VR. In a role reversal, yes, this was on the Gear VR on the go as well. But I'm including it here on the Quest side of things. Um, it is a very realistic ping pong simulator. Even though you're a robot, playing a robot, in a futuristic sci-fi environment. Well, what was innovative about it for the Gear VR and the Go, well, kind of innovative, is the game teleported you to the right location at the table to be able to return the ball. So... Obviously, in the Quest version, the, that motion is up to you. You move yourself to where you you need to be. So, that sounds like it's not that big a deal. I mean, after all, it wasn't that big a deal for the Anne Frank house, right? But this kind of makes it a realistic version of table tennis. Whereas, before, it was as close as it could be, given that you weren't actually moving. But it's, it's before it's, you know, you, you could only do these motions with it. So, um, now you're, you're making full arm motions with it and you can move around to exactly where you need to, need to be. So it feels more like real table tennis and, and the physics are pretty spot on. So I recommend it. I got this as an uh, as an upgrade title, but if if you didn't have it on the Gear VR or the Go, but by all means go and get it if you like it. table tennis. Number nine, Sense Riders and Pistol Whip. I'm including both of those because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do. So. They are both rhythm games that are not Beat Saber. Uh, so Speed Saber is a really good game. I don't own it yet. I've only played the demo. And it gets enough press it doesn't need my help. 
says these ones don't get quite as much press as Beat Saber does, although the Pith Whip comes close. Sense Riders is a very fun game. It's got, in my opinion, hectic tracks and it has a level editor where you can uh, design y y y your own maps, your own tracks. And it's got various d d difficulties, it's got various modifiers, you know, you, you can turn on the ghost notes, you can turn on prismatic notes so you can't tell if it's supposed to be right or left hand unless you already know it. And all sorts of things of that nature to make it harder and earn more, more points. But one thing that it's got that that Beat Saber does not is as as Vivian of the Hive said recently on Twitter, it's a game where sh where you can chill or be active because the default normal game mode is just have the, have your orbs in the right spot. So if you have three or four notes in a row, all all lined up with each other, just hold your orb there, and you get them all. Or you can go into force mode where you get more points if you are moving when you hit the note. That also makes it a little bit harder because, of, well, if you go a little bit too soon, a little too fast, then the note sails right by and you didn't hit it. So, but th 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 that makes it more of a workout, that makes it more active. It's the other way where you're just holding it there makes it more relaxing. So, it's a very versatile game and it's very fun and it has some unique elements like a two-handed note where you have to have both hands t t together in order to have the note count. And now for Pith Whip. It also is a very incredibly innovative game. It's a rhythm game, but you don't have to shoot the enemies on any exact beat. You can hit them on any beat, as long as it's on the beat. So, um, in Beat Saber, the notes come at you, and if you don't hit them at the right time, it counts against you, and enough missed notes, and you're lost. In Pistol Whip, you can miss all the notes, and still make it to the end. And if there's no set, have to hit the note now. You, you can let it go by you, and then turn around. Hit the enemy while while he is behind you, as long as it's on the beat. So it doesn't have to be on beat one. It could be on beat three, beat two, beat four. So it's it's very flexible in that regard and very fun, and makes for more replayability, in my opinion, because it's a little bit different every time. So number eight, Orbis VR Reborn. This was one of the first titles I got. Um, and I am still playing it, even now. I mean, I got this back in, in May, I believe. And I managed to get it on a sale on Rift store, and then because it was cross by, and I had a few dollars of store credit left or whatever, I got it at a little bit more of a discount. But even if you're not able to get it at a discount, I would highly recommend it. If you're unsure about it and you have access to Steam VR, I believe they have a free demo of it where or a free trial where you can play it for free up to level 10 of any of the classes. So you can level your warrior up to 10, then go level your bard up to 10, go level your shaman up to 10, rune mage, and keep we keep leveling up all the classes 
up to 10 before you decide if you want to buy it or not. Uh, it does have some learning curve to it because the onboarding is not the best. You really need to go in with other people or find other people in the game that are uh, willing to help you learn the rope, and a lot of them are. Because, as I mentioned, the onboarding isn't always the greatest. However, they have been doing a holiday event. They did a fall festival, and now they're doing a winter festival. And I would imagine, them, given the, uh, the popularity of those events, they will keep doing that. So that adds more replayability, draws back the players that are like, well, I beat the game. So, I highly recommend that as well. Number seven is Rec Room. Yes, I know, this one gets a lot of publicity already, but it's one that I enjoy, and um, one that, for better or for worse, has the most reach. It, it, it draws in players from all over, whether from VR, whether from flat screen on the computer, whether from iOS, and soon Android devices. Some people will think that's a bad thing. I, I think it's mostly a good thing. Yeah, it does bring in younger kids who don't know how to behave themselves in, in, in a group setting. The ones that run around going bleep 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 bleep. I know, but you know what? Rec room has moderation controls. You can mute. You can block. You can mute everybody. You can avoid them. You, 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 you can go into your events in a private party, only bringing people that you know know how to behave themselves. So, that's not quite as big a deal as it sounds. And it's the same amount of a deal in, in pretty much all of the social VR or, or platforms right now. All Space has that going on to an extent. The VR Chat has that going on to a large extent. <laughs> so, it, um, it's something that's there in all of the social VR platforms and, and Rec Room has a lot going for it. It's got a lot of fun activities. Stunt Runner, Quest, Paintball, Dodgeball, and they're, they're bringing more of the, the PC uh, rooms and activities to, to the Quest. And it's got user created rooms. I mean, there are I don't even know how many there are. And they are constantly running um, design contests. Like Halloween, they had a Halloween room design contest. And the people were making Dead by Daylight, uh, Bendy and the Ink Machine, all within Rec Room. And yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing what people can do in there. So, number six, Tilt Brush. One of my personal favorites. <clears throat> um, this is a must buy. That is the must buy. Um, if you are into creativity at all, it's a must buy. It's um, painting in the air around you, 3D. Some are flat brushes, but they are in a 3D space. Others are three-dimensional brushes. Um, either way, you can extremely quickly create an entire world. I mean, um, in the month of November, or no, uh, October, I have participated in Inktober. So every day, well, almost every day, I mean, it's a couple, so I, I had to to double up uh, periodically to, to catch up, but I made 31 tote brush paintings in that month. And uh, I tell you, that's the way to, to get good at something. <laughs> um, to do it every day like that from, from a prompt. And it, it, it's amazing. It, um, 
half an hour and I've got an entire scene made. Now, yeah, it's a little bit rough. It's not uh, completely fleshed out and polished enough to to be in a game necessarily, but it's, it, it is there. It reads as what it is. She, she just yesterday, m my son did a tote brush painting of a monster that he learned about from um, his cousin called Siren Head. He got in there, he was getting down on the floor, painting the, the grass. Then he, he got up and he did trees and he did the, the Siren Head the figure. And he zoomed out a little bit and wrote Siren Head so he knew what it was. And I looked at it afterwards and I was like, wow, you did a pretty good job. I didn't even tell him what any of the brushes were or, or what the, the, the they did. I basically just made sure you know how to zoom in and out and all that stuff if you asked how do i undo how do i erase i told him i said that yeah pretty it's pretty intuitive number five gravity sketch speaking of creativity this is much more on the professional side uh ford has been using this has been experimenting with this with the Steam VR version, I believe, using using five pros, and from a Ford evangelist, um, this cuts down um, the design process of an, a new uh, potential car design from like three, four, five months down to two or three days. So it's an incredibly powerful tool, made even more powerful by the recent addition of subdivision modeling. Which, if you don't know what that is, to go and look it up, it's a highly, highly versatile professional tool uh, that revolutionized 3D modeling. The Pixar movies all use it. Uh, so, and, and now Gravity Sketch has it. So you can make a highly professional model within VR. It lacks a little bit on the texturing side. It doesn't have any animation options, but the developers want to eventually turn it into something like the Adobe of VR. So at some point they will either include in this or make a new product that has animation and texturing and surfaces and all that stuff so number four sculptor vr this is the least professional uh, uh, of these three but also one of the most fun uh, it's voxel sculpting and you can really quickly make something that looks like a toddler made it or you can spend a lot more time and make something that looks Actually, pretty realistic. Again, you'll need to add the better texture than another program. Uh, render it in a highly realistic scene or whatever in another program. But it is very powerful, even though it's not really intended as a professional level tool. And what is cool about this is it is collaborative. So you can... Uh, host a multiplayer session and have up to three other people in there with you. So one of you can be working on th the cardinal that's up in the top branch of the tree, and the other be down at the bottom of the, of the tree working on the individual grass blades, <laughs> while another person is working on the, on the house in the distance. And then when you've got it all done looking good, so you can blow it up with rockets. Number three, National Geographic Explorer VR. Um, I got this one back when it was just the Antarctic exploration, where you are trying to find a lost colony of, of penguins. And you have to kayak through the water, and then climb an ice wall with your picks, um, and weather a storm 
that's the middle storm. And then you find the penguins. And now they have Machu Picchu. So, uh, which isn't quite as physical an adventure as that, but it's very entertaining, very immersive, and very, very educational. You are recreating Mayan uh, houses and the temples and whatnot, and then uh, uh, taking pictures of them because that's what National Geographic does. Um, and it's both environments are, uh, are very beautiful, very well made, very well done, and well worth the money, even though each experience is a little bit short, like 30 to 45 minutes. But they will be bringing more locations in, and um, probably still free for the next one or two, but then after that they might start doing kidnap purchases for them. I don't know. Time will tell, but I strongly recommend this one. Number two, Electronauts. This is one I have, uh, I w w w was looking forward to ever since I first saw it, is kind of like a VR version of the iOS and the Android apps where you have various uh, loops from a pack from a specific artist and you can mix and match all the loops and, and uh, kind of create your own song. Electronauts is like that but in VR. And the main difference, I mean obviously graphics, but the main difference between the PC version and the Quest version is you cannot make an audio recording of your performance and you cannot have a camera going and recording you within the game. However, you can still make a recording. Just use the, the built-in Oculus screen recording and you have a recording of your performance or live stream it and, and, and Facebook saves the recording of it. So it's, so it's very fun, very easy to start it and then two hours later go, whoa, where did my time go? So I, I highly recommend it. I got it on a sale because it's high cross by. I got it on uh, like a half off sale on Rift and then it was in my Oculus Quest library so I installed it. And that leads us to number one. The Under Presents. I like to describe this game as the game Salvador Dali and Andy Warhol would have made had they developed a VR game. It's surreal, it's bizarre, it twists time, it twists space, it's got a unique teleportation mechanic mechanic where you reach out and you grab and you pull the environment to, to you basically but it's also got a free locomotion I, I think not everybody knows it's got free locomotion but if you move the uh, thumbstick on your left hand you actually move it with smooth free locomotion so and you can pull off your mask and reverse time do ritual magic, as they call it, and create objects. You can watch shows up on the stage. For the time being, for the next two, two and a half months, they have live actors coming in doing improv routines, showing you secret areas in the game, etc. And they just added new uh, new content recently, too, the, the King Crab update. Now there's an area in the desert where there's a giant crab in a hole and you have to do something with it. I haven't figured it out yet and in the main story part you can watch from beginning to end the destruction of a research vessel trapped in the ice. But you can save the characters by finding the right spot in time to go into their memory maze and solve a puzzle and save them. Well, that is all of my top 20. But wait, there's more. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't quite fit everything in, so I have four bonus or, or honorable mentions. These are newer or newer to me than most of the others, so they haven't quite made it to the top 20 status yet. 
Although, had they come out earlier, or gotten updated earlier, in the case of one of them, they would have. With no further ado, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Apex Construct, Hespy 1, and Swords of Gargantua. Star Trek Bridge Crew came out as a surprise release. Nobody knew that it was coming. And then there was a, a weird, complicated sale going on where you could get it for only $10 um, if you bought it through the Ubisoft website. Um, uh, applied a promotion, got the, the base game and the DLC, and then it, it would be available on your Rift, and because it is cross by, it was available for free on the Quest. Not everybody got a chance to take advantage of it, and then there was another third party having a sale, so yeah, keep your eye out for a, another sale on it if you don't want to get it at the current price, but it's a very fun game. Collaborative and co-op. You have three bridges to, to choose from if you have all of the downloadable content. The original USS Aegis, the Enterprise, and the Next Generation Bridge. And you can play any uh, of four roles. Captain, Helm, Tactical, and um, uh, and operations or engineering, depending on w w which bridge you are. You go on various missions. There's a story mode. There's an, there's an endless mode. It's loads of fun. I recommend it. Apex Construct. I recently, recently got that. And um, it, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, very well done. Got a couple bugs, uh, like... Trying to pick up a clipboard, it gets stuck in the shelving, whatever. That's by one recently got an update. It was full of bugs when it first came out, so it was off to a rocky side, but it's since gotten all those bugs fixed um, and is running much more smoothly now. The enemy AI are a little bit smarter, so they're not quite as dumb, and you can complete things in stealth mode much much better and not have to go guns blazing quite as much. Lastly, <clears throat> Swords of Gargantua. It's a roguelike, Dark Souls-like game. You can do single player <coughs> or you can do multiplayer. And right now, they have an event going on where you can earn basically a red lightsaber and a blue lightsaber. So, it's one of the few games or, um, that has really, really good sword physics. And um, it's a very active game, so please do not try doing it in a standing room only area, turning off your guardian to fool it into so thinking that you have a lot of space. You, you, you really do need a little bit larger space. Uh, otherwise, you, you'll be smashing into things, hurting yourself, and breaking objects. None of which are good. So, now, with that said, that's it. So what are your favorite titles of the year? Do you agree or disagree with any of the ones I mentioned? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And remember to leave a like. And... Happy New Year!